Now we're still on the statement of financial affairs. Question number five, repossessions, foreclosures, and returns. We're going to list everything that you've had in those categories during the one year prior to uh, filing date of your petition. Uh, on repossessions, let me remind you, if you, I want you to read the or listen to the segment on uh, exemptions, but if your car or vehicle has been repossessed, if it hasn't been sold, let's say they took it away from you and repossessed it, but they haven't had the sale date yet, then if you want that car back, then I can get it back for you. Uh, it's the sale date that's the critical, uh, important issue. So be sure to watch that if that's something you want to accomplish. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Assignments and receiverships, question number six. That usually doesn't apply to consumer bankruptcies. Uh, those are for uh, corporate proceedings. Uh, list all property in the hands of a custodian or corner to corner official. Again, those are usually for corporate bankruptcy, so we won't list those. Uh, question number seven is uh, important, and we're going to hit that right now. Uh, any gifts? Uh, if you've given a relative uh, or an insider uh, any gifts uh, that add up to more than $200 per family member uh, or uh, charitable contributions that are more than $100 uh, during the one year prior to filing bankruptcy, then we're going to list those. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that those gifts are going to be taken back or anything, but we need to list them uh, so that no one can accuse you of not answering your petition properly. Uh, question number eight. This is a real important question, and uh, probably unless I cover it with you, you're not going to understand what they're asking. All losses from fire, theft, other casualty, or gambling within one year of filing. Let me give you some uh, consequences of this question. Uh, if you've had a fire loss, if you had uh, uh, a fire at your home or maybe on your car or something, we need to list it. If you had something stolen from you, uh, then we need to list that when you lost it. Uh, other casualty. What's a casualty? Well, let's say you had roof damage on, and you turned in a homeowner's claim. We're going to list that. If you had a uh, auto accident and you had to turn in a claim to your insurance company, well, that's a casualty loss. Casualty is a synonym for uh, personal, personal property. Uh, gambling losses. Have you been to the boats and lost money? Well, we need to list that. Well, why are they asking those questions? Let me give you an example. Let's say that you, uh, in one or more instances, filled out a financial statement, and you put down that you had a $10,000 ring. And yet, when we did your bankruptcy petition, we don't list the $10,000 ring. And then when you're asked about it, you say, well, you know, you listed that $10,000 ring on that financial statement. Where is it? And you'd say, well, I lost it. It was stolen from me. And they'd say, well, did you turn in a police report? Is it missing? Uh, something that significant, you would have turned in an insurance claim. Why didn't you? Or are you trying to hide it from us? So those are the things, you know, again, you don't, honest people don't think of those uh, consequences of answering that agreement, and that's why they miss it. But that's why they're asking those questions. You're being cross-examined without realizing you're being uh, cross-examined. Question number nine, payments to uh, counseling or bankruptcy. I'm going to list what you paid me uh, within response to question nine, but they also want to know if you got taken by one of these uh, debt consolidation companies. You know, there's, there's if you get on the internet and do a little uh, search, there's all kinds of fraud going on with these uh, debt consolidation companies. Well, they want to know about that. And your answer, if you got fleeced by one of those companies, then the Department of Justice is probably going to look into it. This gives them a beginning point to look into that uh, because those companies are a real problem. Uh, number 10, list all other property and transferred in the ordinary course uh, other than in the ordinary course of business. Well, let's give some examples of that that you might not uh, think about. Let's say you sold your car during the last uh, two years. Well, that's a transfer. 
and it's you're not in the business of selling cars so you're going to list when you sold that car uh, if you sold again property on eBay if you sold it at a garage sale anytime you've transferred any property uh, it's going to be listed here now the word transfer isn't used in the way you and I think of in, in ordinary English it has a legal term of art in this question and they don't tell you that but if you had property that was foreclosed upon that's a transfer if you had property that was seized by a repossession that's a transfer so you and I need to very thoroughly go through and make sure that we've listed anything and everything that's appropriate for responding to that question now, question 10B usually won't apply to uh, most consumer bankruptcies. That's if you tried to set up a trust so that you could fleece your creditors. That's, uh, that's usually not applicable. Number 11, closed financial accounts. Uh, did you close any bank accounts during the one year before uh, bankruptcy? Whether it's a checking account, savings account, lockbox, uh, any kind of account. Well, why do they want to know that? Well, let's assume you had $20,000 in the checking or savings account and you closed it out all at one time. Well, understandably, if it was within one year of bankruptcy, the trustee and the uh, court are going to say, well, where's the $20,000? So that's why they're asking these questions. Uh, it's not idle uh, interest on their part. Safety deposit boxes. Uh, list each safety deposit or other uh, account uh, where you've had it within one year. Well, safety deposit boxes. If you have a safety deposit box, for most consumers, the only thing they have in a safety deposit box are important papers and family mementos and all. Uh, and that's fine. We'll just list that you've got the account. Uh, but let's say you kept uh, $50,000 worth of diamond jewelry in there. Well, that's the beginning point for the trustee to ask you about that safety deposit box. Set-offs. What's a set-off? Let's say that your bank said that you were overdrawn on your checking account. So they uh, took money out of your savings account and applied it to your checking account. Well, that's a set-off. Uh, they had money of yours, and they took it away and used it for something that you didn't vote on. That's essentially a short definition of a set-off. Uh, number 14, property held for another person. This is an important question. Let's say that you are using an automobile and the car is titled to uh, your parents. You don't have a car right now. They repossessed your car or quit working or whatever. and You're using uh, your parents' car. Well, you're holding that. You're, that's property in your possession that belongs to someone else. Let's say you have a television in the living room. Your TV broke and uh, your sister knows you're having a hard time, so she's letting, her, letting you use her TV. Well, that's where we're going to list this property held for another person. Uh, we're not going to list the car or the TV in these examples I just gave on your schedule of assets because you don't own those. We're going to list them in response to question number 14. So let's say that somebody makes an anonymous phone call into the trustee and says, hey, debtor was dishonest in his petition, and he didn't list everything that he owned. I know he's driving a car every day, and he's, it's not on his petition. Well, when, if and when asked about it, you're going to say, well, yes, I did list that. It's, it's in response to question number 14. I have possession, but I don't have ownership, and that's why I didn't list, uh, list it in my... Uh, answer to uh, schedule of assets. Prior address of debtor. What they're really asking here is they want to know uh, if you've lived in uh, more than two states during that three-year period so they can challenge or question your use of Missouri exemptions or whatever exemption law that we're using. They don't tell you that but that's why we're, they're asking. So you and I will appropriately will answer their question. Uh, no problem but uh, that's why they're asking. So the, the business questions, I'm not uh, going to worry about, but I, I do want to uh, uh, finish up with if these questions, if you've been in business during that six-year period, then you and I are going to have to answer questions 19 through 25.